குட் மார்னிங் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் இன் யூனிட் ஒன் த நெக்ஸ்ட் டாபிக் இஸ் எம்படட் சிஸ்டம் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் இட் வில் பி ப்ரெசென்டட் பை மை செல்ஃப் டாக்டர் கே கனிமொழி ப்ரொஃபஸர் ட்ரிப்ளி டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் கிளாஸஸ் வி ஹவ் சீன் அண்ட் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் அபவுட் எம்படட் சிஸ்டம் அண்ட் பின் ஃபாலோ அப் வித் தட் டுடே வில் பி சீங் அபவுட் தி எம்படட் சிஸ்டம் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் வி நோ வாட் இஸ் எம்படட் சிஸ்டம் வாட் எவர் ப்ரோக்ராம் விச் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு ரைட் வில் பி எம்படிங் இன்சைட் அ சிங்கிள் ஷிப் அண்ட் இட் கேன் பி யூஸ்ட் ஃபார் சோ மெனி அப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் எம்படட் சிஸ்டம் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் இட் காம்ப்ரைசஸ் ஆஃப் அண்ட் ஹார்ட்வேர் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் அண்ட் அ சாஃப்ட்வேர் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் இட் இஸ் ஷோன் இன் திஸ் பிளாக் டைக்ராம் ஸோ ஹியர் யூ கேன் சி தி ஹார்ட்வேர் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் ஸோ எம்படட் சிஸ்டம் இட் இஸ் காட் சாஃப்ட்வேர் அப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் சாஃப்ட்வேர் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் ஏபிஐ ஹார்ட்வேர் டிபெண்ட் சாஃப்ட்வேர் சிபியூ சிஸ்டம் Next, the hardware interfaces are hardware interface, system interconnect, system bus, hardware interfaces and hardware component. So, these embedded softwares and collectively this hardware which performs the execution platform together will be forming the basis of an embedded system architecture. Okay, next let us see. the definition for this one the architecture of an embedded system is centered around its microcontroller also sometimes referred to as microcontroller unit mcu typically a single integrated circuit containing the processor ram flash memory serial receivers and transmitters and other core components these are typically designed to be inexpensive low resource low energy consuming self contained systems on a single integrated circuit which is the reason why they are often referred to as system on chip next one is the software architecture software architecture ha- can help the teams get control over their software and also the first step in designing a software architecture is recognizing that embedded systems don't have just one architecture instead there are two architectures hardware dependent architecture and independent architecture the first principle for modern embedded software design is the data dictates design so next will be the hardware building blocks of an embedded system so you can see what are the basic building blocks it starts with a power supply a reset control oscillator circuit processor timers next will be the special purpose registers the program memory data memory input device interfacing all these things put together will be called as a hardware building block of an embedded system we will be seeing each and every one block in detail first is the power supply most system have power supply of their own the network interface card and the graphic accelerator are example of embedded system they do not have their own power supply and connect to the pc power supply lines the supply has a specific operation range or range of voltage power source or charge pump is essential for every system next will be the oscillator circuit reset oscillator circuit pressing the reset button causes the program to reset to the application entry at power on reset a power on reset is a circuit that provides a predictable regulated voltage to a microprocessor or microcontroller with the initial application of power when the reset button is pressed a developer will find themselves in the processor's reset handler an oscillator circuit which produces a continuous repeated alternating waveform without any input A developer can then step through all the code including the low level initialization the oscillators basically convert unidirectional current flow from a dc source into an alternating waveform which is of the desired frequency as decided by its circuits components coming to the processor the processor is the heart of an embedded system a processor has two essential units program flow control unit and execution unit it is the basic unit that takes input and produces an output after processing the data the control unit includes fetch unit for fetching the instructions from the memory and the execution unit has circuits that implement the instructions pertaining to the data transfer operation and data conversion 
for an embedded system designer it is necessary to have the knowledge of both microprocessor and also microcontrollers a timer is a specialized type of clock which is used to measure time intervals a timer that counts from zero upwards for measuring time elapsed is often called as stopwatch it is a device that counts down from a specified time interval and it is used to generate a time delay the next one is input device interfacing input interface unit is a type of interface unit in a computer system to convert the analog signals to digital signal it is basically a converter that uses the signals which can be in a predefined form which is acceptable by the computer system the input devices are brought to three categories keyboards pointing devices and data entry devices the next one is system application specific circuits an application specific integrated circuit commonly called as asic is a chip customized for particular use rather than intended for general purpose use so asic is a microchip designed for special applications such as particular kind of transmission protocol or a handheld computer you might contrast it with a general integrated circuit such as microprocessor and the random access memory chips which are used in our normal pc next one is a program memory and data memory in case of program memory it stores the data segment in heaps and in the stack of the file in program memory if fast execution is needed the code of the program to be moved from non volatile memory to the volatile memory and in program memory we have got a rom which is used for permanent saving program and we have also got a random access memory where in which all addressing mode operations are done apart from this a cache memory is also available in this cache memory the pro the programs or the codes which are being moved of more times will be stored and all maximum executions will be done in the cache memory so in today's class we have seen the architecture and classification architecture has been two parts software and hardware both we have discussed in detail thank you students